Salve Citizen! Today we're going to do a spoiler review type thing on the latest book I've just... Well, I finished it about three weeks ago, but I've just got around to actually uh, speaking about it. Which was... Fabius Bile, Primogenitor. Uh, so this is a novel written by Josh Reynolds. He's a very good writer. Um, yeah, I, I, I did enjoy this book immensely. This isn't something that's going to change the law massively unless they, they do actually go down this route with Fabius Bile and make him more of a big character. Which, to be fair, they probably will. He's one of the most well-known guys they've got. Um, I can't see... I mean, in terms of Chaos characters, actual characters, he's one of the few that there are, especially in the 41st millennium. Um, other than the Primarchs, I mean, who else is there? Khan the Betrayer, Abaddon the Despoiler, Cypher... <laughs> But other than that, I mean, there's not many, and especially for the Empress children. But uh, but 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 we'll get into a little bit of his relationship with the, his old legion as we go as we go into the spoilers in a bit. Josh is pretty good writer. I mean, he's been doing. I haven't really read much of his stuff lately because he's been doing um, Age of Sigma, and I ain't interested in Age of Sigma in the slightest. But I'm sure what he's doing is pretty good. They have a lot. They've got a lot of books on Age of Sigma now. I was just looking through the website and. Um, yeah, it's the whole aesthetic thing does nothing for me, but I'm not going to go on whinging about that because that's a waste of everybody's time. Um, he did write uh, the oh, what was it called? Blood, blood, road, road of schools, road of blood, road of schools. I've just checked. Um, yeah, he wrote road, road of schools, and that was a genu That was a really, really good Gotrix and Felix book. He just did the one. Um, it was when sort of I think it was in between. The original series by whatever his name is, I can't remember. <laughs> the original guy who came up with Gotrix and Felix back in the day, and uh, the the other guy who came in and did like five or six of them, um, and they were they were all right, but they weren't on the same level at all, um, uh, not at all. Uh, but they were they were fine. But Road of Schools was just on its own. Um, I think it had some short stories attached with it, but. It, it, it was genuinely good. Um, it was it was it was quite brutal, if I remember correctly. They were in the mountains, weren't they, with the Slayer King fighting some corn dudes, and there was some shady corn. Do ah, that was it. Yeah. So that in that story, there's this chaos champion who's a bit of a coward, and he's not so much a chaos champion like he's gone full in for chaos, but he, he seems to have uh, accidentally found himself joining up with the forces of chaos, and then he's kind of stuck there. Um, and I cannot remember the guy's name, but he appeared in the End Times, and he was a fairly big character in the End Times, um, in the Siege of Middenheim. Um, yeah, I think so. During yeah, during the Siege of Middenheim. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh Josh Reynolds is pretty good. Um, he, he, I like the way he paints a picture. He uh, he's, he's very good with painting environments. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else he did. It was a bunch, yeah, he was mostly a fantasy writer, it seems. Um, I'm just looking for a thing. There's some of them I haven't actually read, but then some of them I have. I mean, he wrote The Blazing Suns, the Bla Knights of the Blazing Sun, I should say. Um, he wrote a fair amount of fantasy. Um, yeah, he wrote the Naga that's it, the Nagash one of the end times. Now, and he wrote the final one. Now, the novelizations, I thought, weren't that bad at all. Um, the Nagash one was really good. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, the work that he put in, he knew the universe, he knew the law. Fantastic. Um, the same is true with this Fabius Bile novel. Um, if you don't know that much about the law, you might be a bit lost, I think, when you're reading through this, because there's, there's a lot of callbacks to things that you might not necessarily... I don't know, they're not blatant. It's quite, uh, it's quite subtle, I have to say, even though they're in a in the eye of terror and everything's a bit fucked up <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, he presents the eye of terror in a in a believably magnificent way um it's it's complete mess but it's understandable and believable um and it goes by the laws of the universe which you know is a problem uh, to, to it's difficult to convey that i think and he's, he's achieved that here and i was very happy with it but again it isn't it isn't law changing. It isn't 
going to be changing the universe unless they go down a certain route with Fabius Bale and he becomes one of the sort of main protagonists of the chaos side, which is possible. Um, okay, so that's my opinion anyway. If you're interested in chaos, if you're interested in Fabius Bile, if you want to understand what the legions have gone up, have been up to since uh, the Horus Heresy and the Siege of Terror, you get a snippets of information that are quite hard. If if it's if it's canon, whatever that means anymore, if it's canon, then this will be interesting to you um, in terms of where the Horus Heresy is going, what's going to happen to some of the characters. So yeah, it, it's a great book, and I highly recommend it. Going forward, if anyone is listening to these, I'm probably only going to review books that I enjoyed. If I read a book and I thought it was crap, I'm not going to bother because it's already wasting enough of my time and I don't want to waste anybody else's time. I mean, other people might think something's fantastic and I think it's terrible. but um, And vice versa. But... Uh, yeah, this was this was a good read. It was fun. It wasn't uh, it wasn't over the top bolter porn. It was quite clever. There were it's a lot of conversations. It's it's reasonably deep, I suppose, if you want to think about it like that. It's um, and that, but the battle scenes are great as well, um, and believable. I mean, I know you're talking about you're talking about genetically enhanced super soldiers and demons and shit like this, but they've got to have a sort of grounding, a bit of grit, and uh, yeah, this this Josh guy, he knows how to do that. He's conveying that very well. But um, if you didn't like the End Times novels, I would recommend going back on them, reading them in isolation, reading them as beyond the rules, beyond the destruction of the old world, on their own, especially the Nagash one, I, f- I found very enjoyable. The one, the, the, the End time, the last one, where, uh, where Chaos wins, is genuinely a good read. Um, I enjoyed all the characters he brought in. Um, he clearly knows his stuff. He's put the research in, and yeah, you can. It's in the product. I mean, especially when you compare it to the army books that were brought out, where they just uh, tell the overall story and then give you a then, <laughs> then a bunch of OP army lists, <laughs> which is which is pretty much what I remember happening. But the novels themselves, they're they're different to the actual. Uh, to the the law side that was presented, the novels themselves, uh, they're, they're they're more grounded and more realistic and more understandable in terms of characters and what they're doing. But yeah, Fabius Bar, great book. Go get it. I'll give it a read. You'll enjoy it. It's a uh, it's a good way to see what the forces of chaos are up to when they're not fighting the Imperium and frothing at the mouth and stuff. Because these people aren't stupid. They aren't necessarily barbarous people. And especially when it comes to Fabius Boyle, he was one of the, I wouldn't say instigators, but he was he was from there, he was there from the beginning um, of the sort of corruption of the legions and the start of the heresy. So it's it's good to find him, more information on him. He's a, the, Josh has made him a very complex character. Um, oh, it's a very complex. It's not Hannah. This isn't the, you know, Silence of the Lambs or anything like that. But it's... It's added depth to him, I suppose you could say. Um, so yeah, yeah, highly recommended. Okay, so we're going to go into spoilers now, and I'm going to give you a sort of a rough overview of the law that's come out of this. So now it's time to go away. If you are actually going to buy this book, have you gone? Good. Right. So after the heresy. Or during the Siege of Terror, it appears Fabius Boyle looked around him at the burning skies and the burning cities and the massive amounts of warfare going on and thought, this isn't really for me and this seems like a complete waste. I'm getting out of here. So he packed up all his experiments, he packed up all his stuff, he packed up all his kits, jumped on a ship and left halfway through the siege or just at the beginning of the siege. uh, Completely, um, well, not the word, I want to say disenfranchised, but that's not the word. But, you know, he was completely, he was done with it. it. It wasn't for him. Anyway, so I, we have to assume that uh, <clears throat> he made his way. I don't think he made his. He, he didn't convey that he made his way straight to the eye um, during the great scouring. I suppose he seems to have bobbed along and carried on doing what he was doing. But what was he doing? Well, he was attempting at first to, as we know from the Horus Heresy novels, to make to improve upon the Emperor's design, which. Having seen what Magus, Archmagus uh, Call has done with the Primaris Marines, he's probably a bit disappointed with himself. But um, but that leads me to, what are they going to do with Fabius Boyle in the future? If they are going to use him <coughs> in this way, in this and the way the novel conveys, he, he could be a potentially 
major piece of the law to come because of what he's been doing. So what has he been doing? He has been, since then, he's been in the in the Eye of Terror. Um, up to this point, whenever this point is, it seems to be Abaddon is assembling his Black Crusade. And I think it might be the first Black Crusade. I'm not too sure. <clears throat> or... Yeah, I think it's in that timeline. So it's it's just before the first Black Crusade, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense time-wise. Yeah, so he has been creating a new. Uh, he's been trying to create a better version of humanity, rather than the Space Marines themselves. He's gone back to the core of it. And he's been producing, and he's succeeded in producing, a new race of people um, who are stronger, faster. They're more resistant to chaos, because this is the thing with Fabius. He's not really into the whole chaos corruption thing. Now, yeah, he's he's a crazy person. Uh, you know, he walks around in a coat made of people's skin. Um, you know, some leering faces on his little jacket that he wears over his power armor. But... He is not fallen to chaos. He is just um, eccentric. So, this is what he's been doing. These people have, like, you know, warding tattooed under their skin uh, to defend themselves against chaos. They have weapons that are uh, anti chaos, uh, sort of uh, null weapons that null ammunition. He's created this, this group and they're completely loyal to him. Um, and his idea is to create a new race of people to repopulate humanity and, I, I guess, break away from the influence of chaos so they're immune to it, um, which obviously isn't what the chaos people want, and it appears it is not what some elements of Eldar society, or Aldari or whatever they're called now, want either, because they, uh, they attempt to get him to leave his research uh, by various means, and basically lead the third legion it is the third legion isn't it lead the emperor's children reunite the scattered war bands of the emperor's children because he did do this originally when they went into the eye of terror um as they fled in there the legions began to take pieces of territory for themselves and go to war with each other over these territories and basically uh fabius led the emperor's children he united these they weren't war bands yet, they were still in their company formations, their remnants of their chapters. They were broken, they were battered from the Siege of Terror and the flight into the Eye of Terror. But he united them, and I believe he took Horace's body, I think. I think that's what happened. It isn't actually explicitly said in the novel, I was quite surprised by that. I had to just like <laughs> rake my memories to try and find out what happened. So yeah, he, uh, he led them there. Um, they were finally defeated by Abaddon, who came along with his uh, Black Legion and smashed them basically and they fled to the four winds um and Abad and fabius said uh, i've had enough of this i'm going back to my research and he took his sort of little cabal of apothecaries or like-minded space marines and so on that he had with him and these are guys from various different chapters one of his main assistants his sort of right hand man is a actually a word bearer um a word bearer a world eater uh, apothecary and who has seemed to have mastered the butcher's nails or the uh, the the urge to uh, hack and slash that seems to be bred into the into the old warhounds legion so yeah uh, so basically the story comes up that uh, one of uh, Avedon's former close advisors another apothecary from the emperor's children comes back to the world uh, asks him to do a deal to help him out with his new warband that he's with which is a former uh, Empress Children Company, uh, which is you know completely gone slanish. You know what I mean? Like uh, there's demonettes, there's, <laughs> there's dungeons and disgusting things. You know, stages made out of people, chairs made out of living people who scream and stuff. You know, all that lovely stuff. Um, anyway, they're getting involved into uh, a, a scheme. The Eldar are behind it. The Eldar have made a deal with this Apocrypha Kerry, um, but their their goal is to force Fabius down a certain uh, pathway and at the end of the novel he realises this and says no and uh, yeah um, that's it that's it really that's pretty much what happens um, they end up going to a craft world a small craft world on the edge of the Eye of Terror 
and uh, they attack it using a very ingenious way. Like I say, I mean, I'm giving you spoilers, but I don't want to give you the whole the whole gist. I mean, it's, what's important from this novel? It's 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 who Fabius Boyle is and what he's been doing and what he could potentially be doing in the future, which is to create a new race of people who are superior to normal humans and in some ways stronger than the space marines and this would be naturally bred into them rather than needing to be surgically and genetically enhanced they're going to just breed and create these people and he's been at this for a long time on the world he was on the rejects and failures was basically thrown out of their little lab fortress they had and uh, because they've been there for so long for a couple of centuries <coughs> a couple of centuries sorry they've created their own cultures and bred their own the their own society um formed into tribes and they war and stuff and they uh, worship him as uh, papa mutagen mutanus or mutagenus <laughs> which is quite true, which is quite nice that's the thing the book's full of the book is full of uh, little jokes you know the way the, the space marines interact with each other the chaos space marines is quite interesting but there seems to be a quest amongst them um the moment anyone mentions anything about reunifying the third legion reunifying the emperor's children um providing brotherhood or you know we need to band together to achieve something because this is great and everything i love torturing people and having ridiculous sexual experiences but I think we need to do something a bit more more substantial with our lives. They all they all perk their ears up and they're all dead into it. Um, but Fabius isn't. He he thinks that the Third Legion is a carcass. It's done. It's dead. Um, and speaking of carcasses, Fabius Bile has been replacing his body dozens of times. He's got clones of himself everywhere. He appears to be just falling apart. He gets his head. He gets his brain implanted in a new body fairly frequently because his body's just disintegrating now whether this is I don't know perhaps it's because he hasn't fully embraced chaos that the eye of terror is actually ripping him to pieces or there is some kind of flaw within his body being as though he was one of the oldest I think he was a Terran marine a Terran recruit and yet as we know the Emperor's children suffered from a terrible accidents which reduced their numbers massively um, which is one of the reasons why they were always one of the smallest legions um, so if Fabius was one of these original recruits who survived this initial catastrophe and he's probably one of the oldest surviving uh, space marines in the galaxy right now if he was from this first founding of the legions on Terra before the Great Crusade um, or at the start of the Great Crusade then yeah he is one of the oldest ones so anything that wasn't quite worked out of the system he would have um so yeah yeah potentially he's one of the oldest which is why it's so interesting to hear from him and he's he's got a very melancholy sarky sort of attitude towards things um he just slags off greater demons to their face which is nice um he's not in awe of these things at all he he, re he genuinely seems to think that chaos is just a joke um the only reason it's got power is because people believe in it which according to the law of the universe he's completely correct um so he he has no respect for them he doesn't want to be someone's servant uh, which is of course one of the reasons why <coughs> uh fulgrim has put a bounty out on his head um and they have had a big falling out um some time ago and yeah fabius is done with it all he's doing his own thing he's trying to save the human species in his own way which for him appears to have been one of the main reasons why he did this in the first place um, for whatever other, other people decided to turn from the Emperor for one reason or another, for him, he was pursuing perfection. And he's still pursuing perfection. And now he believes that he's got the means to save humanity from the forces of chaos and annihilation. And, yeah, he's, he's doing a reasonable job, I suppose, compared to a lot of chaos guys. He's, uh, I mean, like, obviously, I say all this, he's a likeable evil character. He's doing terrible things to people all the way through, like just experiments and horrible, horrible things. But uh, you get past that because he's a he's a reasonable, uh, reasonably enjoyable character to follow. Um, so yeah, yeah. If, if you're interested in this, if you're interested in seeing what the Chaos Legions have been up to in the Eye of Terror, to fill in some of the background on these really sort of well-known characters i think this is a good thing that they're doing and I'm, i want to see more of it um i'm going to read uh well i don't know what i'll read next but 
this Fabius Biobook is a is a good start down that route, and I hope it enriches the whole thing, you know, because um, the Empress Children seem to have like a Phoenix Court of warlords or what were the chapter masters who've now become other chapter masters, who've now become commanders of these war bands and so on who are trying to and that's what they want Fabius to rejoin and lead them because he's the only one who could probably lead the entire remnants of the legion and they want that because they're stronger together but he doesn't want it um he sees them as corrupted as done you know they they've they failed the test which from his point of view they did um so yeah yeah, if you're interested uh, in this side of the Chaos Forces, if you want to know more about one of the most uh, well-known characters in the Chaos Forces, and someone I, I believe, they'd be crazy not to, but I, be, I, I believe he's probably going to play a big part in the times to come um, because of who he is and what they could potentially do with him in terms of, especially as, as you see what's happened with the Primaris Marines, um, what Cole did is exactly what uh, what Fabius was trying to do for a long time, um, and then he's decided to create human beings who are superior, a superior race of of mankind, rather than um, simply modifying the space marines. So yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the book. It was a good read. Um, it was a quick read. Um, I went through it very quickly. I've just moved on to other things since then, so I haven't had a chance to do a little review. But um, yeah, if, you, if you're interested in Chaos and deeper into the background, and again, you'll need to know some stuff to read this to fully appreciate all the little bits and bobs in there. But the way he presents the eye is fantastic. The environment, how he presents the environment is great. I really like how he's, uh, how he's shown the eye of terror from this perspective. Um, but yeah, yeah, great book. Definitely recommend it. And yeah, so go and pick it up if you can. All right then, so yeah, um, please remember to subscribe and like, really please like, and uh, leave a comment if you've got a view on this, if you've read it. Uh, yeah, and you can find me on all the other social media networks and channels and everything if you want to if you want to follow me. More stuff to come, law-wise, um, working on some big things at the minute, um, so they'll be coming out soon. But uh, yeah, it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.